Welcome to the MH2801 video segment on an overview of the Fourier analysis part of the course. In this part of the course, we will consider general functions f of t such that they are square integrable. So such square integral means that the integral from minus infinity to infinity, the absolute value of t squared dt is less than infinity. So these kind of uh, so in this part of the course we'll be mostly concerned with uh, such functions. Uh, although some of the techniques that we will learn in this part of the course can also apply to non-square integrable functions. Now for this kind of functions, we can further classify them into periodic functions as well as aperiodic ones. For periodic functions, we will look at Fourier series and here we can look at two different uh, definitions of Fourier series. The first of which are the real Fourier series. Okay, whose which is given by Ft equals to A naught plus a sum from n equals to 1 to infinity of a n cosine 2 pi n t divided by capital T where t is the period so let's write that down here t equals to the period of the function uh, and, or, and also so not just only not just over a sum of cosines but also over a an infinite sum of sines so sum equals to n to infinity of bn sine 2 pi n t divided by capital T. Now, besides the real Fourier series, which is uh, perhaps you know, uh, more intuitive if we're dealing with real functions, so here the functions are real, uh, we can also write down a complex Fourier series for the real, fun real periodic function f of t, The complex Fourier series is defined as okay, f of t equals to a sum going from n equals to minus infinity to n equals infinity of cn e to the i 2 pi n t divided by capital T. So this is the uh, form of the complex Fourier series, whereas this form here is the form of the real Fourier series. And when we go to the video segment on real Fourier series and complex Fourier series, uh, it will show you how the coefficients a n, a naught, b n, as well as the, Fourier, the coefficient c n of the complex Fourier series can be uh, determined from the function itself. Now, moving on. So whether the function is periodic or aperiodic, we can always define its Fourier transform. So we can define its Fourier transform as follows. Okay, we can define its Fourier transform as uh, f twiddle of omega equals to 1 over square root 2 pi an integral from minus infinity to infinity of e i omega t f t dt. Okay, so this is the defining uh, equation for the Fourier transform f twiddle omega of the function f of t. And this applies whether the function f of t is periodic or aperiodic. Now this normalization constant over here uh, is um, there are the different conventions that are uh, being used in different parts of the literature. We will follow the convention used in Afghan and Weber and introduce a normalization of 1 over square root 2 pi. Uh, when I go on to the video segment on Fourier transform, I will also introduce the other more commonly seen uh, normalization uh, convention that is used uh, to define Fourier transforms. Now, besides 
knowing how to uh, evaluate a Fourier transform, uh, in this part, in this course, students should also know how to evaluate an inverse Fourier transform. Okay, and the reason for that is that means that you know it is not simply looking up a lookup table uh, for Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform pairs and just reading off the answer. Uh, in this course, students are expected to know how to evaluate inverse Fourier transform if it can be done at all. Okay, and the inverse Fourier transform, uh, analogous to the uh, Fourier transform, is defined as such. So the Fourier transform brings you from f of t to f twiddle of omega. Uh, the inverse Fourier transform brings you from f twiddle of omega to f of t. Uh, in this manner, as an integral, 1 over square root 2 pi times the integral from negative infinity to infinity, e minus i omega t, f twiddle omega, and integrate uh, respect to omega. So this is the definition of the inverse Fourier transform. Uh, in a later video segment, we will see how this can be evaluated frequently with the help of contour integration. Now, in this part of the course, we shall also learn about uh, we shall also learn about the direct delta function. So let me write that down here. You also learn about the direct delta function. Okay, uh, I will introduce two different ways that the direct delta function is defined. Uh, although for for most practical purposes. Uh, we should think of the Dirac delta function not as a function but as a distribution defined by the following uh, properties and that is normalization. If I integrate a Dirac delta function delta t minus t naught over all times, then this should be 1. And, if, and then the, the other property that is satisfied by a Dirac delta function is the normalization property. If I multiply the direct delta function delta t minus t naught by f of t and then integrate with respect to t from minus infinity to infinity, then this integral evaluates to f at t naught. So it localizes the value, the function to the to the point t naught. Now, and then in terms of the direct delta function and also of the Fourier transform, we will introduce an analogous uh, concept called the convolution. Okay. And the dividing equation looks like uh, f star g of t is equal to 1 over square root 2 pi, an integral from minus infinity to infinity, f of t prime, g of t minus t prime, and then integrated over dt prime. This is the definition of a convolution between the functions f of t and g of t. And then uh, at the, to finish up with the course, we will introduce the convolution theorem. theorem, which states that the Fourier transform E i omega t times f star g of t dt is actually equals to the product of the Fourier transform. So f twiddle omega times g twiddle omega. And then we will make use of all these that we have learned to solve ODEs. Solve ODEs and solve PDEs. And of course, we will show, show you examples of how this can be done in a later video segment.